Hey, I'm Bob and I like to make stuff, and I'm afraid of machining. Now, this is a bridge port. It's a milling machine. This is a metal lathe, it's a South Bend lathe, and I've had both of these for about two years, and I've only used them a handful of times. I say that I'm afraid of these tools because there's a few things about them that I am legitimately scared of. The big thing is safety. Uh, these are dangerous machines, and if not used correctly, they can seriously hurt you. They can take off limbs, they can cut you in ways that are really, really bad, and so that's a real fear of mine. And the other part is that I just kinda don't know what I don't know. Uh, there's a lot about both of these tools, about the type of cutter heads that you use, the speeds and feeds, the type of materials that you can use that I just don't have any experience with. And to be honest, I've had these for about two years and I've been avoiding using them, and I don't want to do that anymore. I want these to be things that are a part of my arsenal. And so today, we're going to make a simple project that takes advantage of both of these tools. This is the old stop block that I made to go on my miter station. Now this thing works pretty well, but honestly I would like something a little bit more flexible. I'd like something that can move out of the way and not have to be completely taken off. So I thought this would be a good example of something that we could make completely out of metal, take advantage of the milling machine and the lathe. But I did want to point out that buying something to do exactly what I'm going to make would cost about $27. So this project is absolutely not about doing it cheaper or easier, it's just about doing it myself. All right, so this is what we're working with. This is the T-track that we're gonna be sliding this thing into. So eventually we'll have to take measurements of all the inside shape so we know how big to mill the pieces. I'm gonna start with this and then build something that comes out from it. Another part of this that I could use is this handle. But again, remaking this on the lathe would be a big challenge for me personally. So I think I'm gonna have to give that a shot. And so I've got the screw that I was talking about before. There's gonna be a piece that fits in the T-track, and this piece is gonna be flat so that it won't be able to rock or twist. Then we'll have the handle out here, and that'll be twisted to tighten these two things together. Now, from the side perspective, there's also gonna be a leg that will come down and actually be the stop block. That's what the wood will touch when I'm setting it up on the saw. So this leg will hopefully be able to pivot up and out of the way, and so I have several things that I need to make here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Now, before we get started, there's a few things that are really important that I, I haven't quite figured out, but these are kind of the big things that I want to focus on in this video. Safety, using the tools. I need to figure out how to do it as safely as possible. Order of operations, because cutting and drilling and threading and all that stuff has to happen in the right order, otherwise it becomes really, really difficult to do using the right materials and the right bits for those materials because not every metal is the same, so not every cutter head is the same, so I've got to get all of those relationships right. And I want this thing to have a nice finish. When it's done, I don't want it to look like it's hobbled together. I want to try to figure out how to make this look like a really nice piece of metalwork, like a piece of tooling. And so I'm trying to keep all four of those things in my head, uh, and as I work through those, hopefully we'll, we'll get there. But the first step is to take measurements of the T-Track. I'm gonna use aluminum and brass for this, and I've got these kind of blocks. I'm not gonna need very much material, so I have plenty of opportunity to screw up and still have a lot of material left. But basically, by starting with something like this, I can just worry about taking off what I need in a very small area with a material that's not very hard. Aluminum and brass are both softer metals or non-ferrous, and they will cut differently than steel, but they should be easier for the machines to go through, which means, theoretically, there shouldn't be as much danger I don't know. Really the point is I want to start on something softer, easier to work with, and then I'll work my way up to steel later on. I cut this piece off and then realized that I have this, which is much closer to what we actually want. So I'm just going to start with this material instead, because basically we only need about that much thickness. It doesn't need to be very thick, just thick enough to go into the T-track and then have a face on the outside of it. So I'm going to cut basically this size piece out of this thickness of material. I got roughly the shape cut out here. Now you can tell obviously that there's kind of a smooth surface, flat surface down here and not up top. So one of the things that I'm not used to is that you have to start by squaring up your material. So I'm gonna use this surface down 
and then use the end mill to flatten the top so that these two sides are parallel. But I'm gonna work on trying to get this thing completely square in all directions before actually doing any of the real work. You have to prep the material. So I have to change the end mill. What is in there I used to drill holes in steel when I was making the rotisserie. And that wasn't scary because it was just drilling holes. So it's basically using this thing as a drill press, but it's useful for a lot more than that. We have collets. The collet goes in there and holds the tool. So depending on the size of tool there you're using, you have to pick the right collet. Um, I don't really know if it matters how big of a tool at this point, because all of the cuts I'm making are gonna be really big, really wide. So I'm probably just gonna stick with this half inch and see if I have a bit that will work for aluminum. That is a two flute bit, half inch. So we'll start with that. All right, so these, uh, I can't remember what these are called. You put these things in the vise and it gives you a parallel surface or a flat surface to put on. These are the same, here, just let me show you. And these go down in here. So when they sit on the bottom, uh, they create a parallel surface for you to sit your work on. So once your workpiece is sitting on top of those, we know that this surface will be parallel to the surface uh, that we set those things on. Is any part about what you're about to do scary? At this point, I'm pretty comfortable because uh, this cut is just shaving off the top. So we're not making a deep cut, uh, not making a really difficult cut. It's just shaving the top to be completely flat. So you've kind of done this before. Yeah, I've done this part before, and this, this isn't too bad. Theoretically, I should do the same thing. It doesn't matter in this particular situation for what I'm making, but as practice, I can take the bit out here and cut this surface on its side so that this will be perpendicular to the one that I just cut. So this is one of those things where I just shouldn't have moved the piece. See how exciting machining is? I think that's it. Now I have to lay out on here all of the different sections that I have to cut out. I'm just gonna cover this and then once you let it dry, you can scrape it away and make really fine marks. You can kinda see them. I need to get rid of this section, this section, that section, that section, <laughs> and that section. I only need to keep these two. So I marked down the depth that I'm gonna need to cut, and it's only two millimeters. So this thing is actually a lot less dramatic of a shape than what I was expecting, which doesn't matter. It's just, I don't really have to cut off that much. So I've gotta go down two millimeters and cut a slot this way and this way, and then right out of the middle, and I should have this section and this section that are just slightly proud. So I'm gonna go put this in like this, make the two long cuts, flip it around, make that other cut, and then we'll see if it fits, because that's the first step in seeing if this is even usable. Now, we can set our zero. So that is our, so we now want to cut to where that goes down to two. All right, so we gotta go see if it fits. Just a little, oh. There's actually just a little bit of a burr on there. I just popped off with my finger. So now it is in there. So the next step will be to drill a hole right in the center of this so that the screw can fit through it. And then we'll make sure that that fits and go from there. All right, ready? Look at that. It's like perfect. Let's go try it and see if it fits. All right. So I want to make sure that that will fit, and it looks like it will. Just if I were gonna use this, I'm not. Cool. I'm so scared. No, that actually wasn't so bad. 
Of course, that was the easy part. The more complicated part is actually going to be the knob because that goes to the metal lathe, which is infinitely more scary to me. But I still have one more thing to do to this. I spent the evening changing my plan a little bit. Originally, this was supposed to go on the side and was going to be able to flip up out of the way when you didn't need it. This piece is too small, and rather than remaking this to be thicker, instead I'm just going to change the plan. So instead of being out here on a pivot point, this is going to have a slot through the middle of it and is going to go right on top. So it will be able to move up and down on this piece so you can loosen the knob, slide it up and get it out of the way, and then tighten the knob and hold it down. Next, I need to cut a slot in this piece. So I need to fit this back in there, figure out where to cut the slot, how wide it needs to be to fit this, and then just do it. Oh, look at that. So this piece needs a slot in it right there so that it can slide up and down on that. This is gonna take forever. Got the slot which is probably a little bigger than it needs to be, but it should go like that and slide. And then when you tighten this face on, it'll hold it all together, lock it into place. I think this part is pretty much done. Uh, the next thing, and honestly the scariest part for me, is making a knob that will thread on here. And so for that, we have to go to the lathe. Was that scary at all? This uh, was not as scary as I thought it would be. It was more just problematic having to figure out my changes along the way. That's good. Whoa. Wonder what note it is. B flat? Yeah, totally wrong. It's a D. I think we're actually done at the bridge port. So these are the parts that we ended up with. We've got the mount that goes in the track and then the little foot that slides up and down. All of this moves really nicely. Um, I've sanded all the surfaces so it looks pretty good. Not great, but it looks pretty good. So I think all these pieces are done. And I do want to say that all the work I did on the bridge port actually turned out not to be as scary as I was expecting. So it started out, I was a little apprehensive of it, but then basically it's the same operation over and over. So you start to get comfortable with the controls, how they react to you, how quickly things move and all that type of stuff. That could have to do with the fact that this is aluminum. I'm not sure, maybe steel would be a little scarier, but overall that went really well. Now we have to go on to the actual dangerous, scary part, and that's the metal lathe. This is my South Bend lathe that I showed you earlier, and I will be honest that this thing is, is scary. Whoa! That's terrifying. But I think a lot of it is because I just don't know what it does. I mean, I know what a lathe does. This spins around with some material in it, and then you move this cutting tool into that material to cut it or shape it or whatever you need to do. The problem is, I don't know what any of this stuff does. There's all sorts of knobs and switches and levers and all these things. I don't think I need to know those to use the tool, but knowing those would help me use it more effectively. So we're gonna get to all that some other time. Today, I just wanna try to get some material in here and then use the tooling I have to make a little knob. And that knob needs to have knurling around the outside. That's like a pattern, like a grip pattern that you cut into the outside edge. And I've never done that before. I just ordered the tool and it just showed up so we're gonna try this thing out. I want you to understand what's happening here. You got two little wheels that have kind of cutting lines in opposite directions. And so as you put the material in here, it rolls across and these two things cut those lines in opposite directions at the same time. And so this point right here has to be centered on the material. So I've got to figure out how to figure out uh, how to center the material on this and then get it all lined up before we can actually do anything. I'm gonna start with a round bar I don't really need to change the shape of this or anything, luckily. I just need to add the knurling and then cut it off at the right size. So one of the reasons I'm starting with the round bar, even though I have this square bar of the same material, is that when this thing comes out of the factory or however they make it, it is not square. You can actually see that there's a curve in this piece. It's bent in a couple of different directions. So to use this on the lathe effectively, I would basically have to take it on the mill, flatten the sides, 
and then take it on the lathe and spin it and knock off these corners and I'm gonna end up with a much smaller material than just starting with the round bar. Even starting with the round bar, I'm gonna run over the outside of it to try to make sure that it's perfectly round before I do any of the knurling. Ready? I'm gonna turn this thing on and I hope that my mic will be able to give you an idea of how abrupt the sound is. And if you're used to this, it's not a big deal. But if you're not, it feels like a lot. Check this out. Another thing that's scary about that is that these jaws of this chuck extend past the face of it and you can't really see them once it's spinning. So it feels like as you're moving things in, you're just gonna end up hitting something. You're probably not, but I'm just trying to explain some of the things that make me apprehensive about doing this. So I'm gonna start by getting the tool down here and touching the material. And you use these knobs to kind of drive it on the different axis. And so once you kind of touch the material, then I'm gonna back it off and then I'll start to move it in a little bit. And as we then move it through the material, it'll cut it off. I think. Well, why don't you stop talking about it and do it? Now? Okay, let's do it. <laughs> I'm going to have to go a little bit deeper to get to an actual real true cylinder. Every one of those weird noises, if the sound changes, it feels like something's about to go wrong. And I know it's probably not, but I could probably make deeper cuts just to make sure that I'm getting deep enough. But you know, if you, if you try to cut too deep and it the cutting bit gets bound, that's when the machine's gonna start fighting back. And so trying to avoid anything binding up, you know? So that is not centered at all. Whoa, it did it, I think. It's really fine, but it almost looks like it's kind of wiping itself out. Like it's, no, I can see the pattern in there. It just needs to be deeper, I guess. Cool, I uh, feel better because Start. Yeah, it didn't fail. I just need to do more. I just realized something. <laughs> this knob right here is uh, the kind of quick lock to hold the tool in place. And I had it forward, which is wrong. And now that I look at it, I should have seen that it was wrong. Uh, but it means that the tool wasn't actually locked in completely, and so now I've got it pulled back where it should be, the tool is locked in, which means I'll probably have better results if I do this next pass. It'll probably work better and I shouldn't have to push the tool as hard. But anyway, if you saw that in the wrong place, I recognize it. Don't do that. Yeah, I think so. I think it worked, but looking at it closely, you can see little uh, double lines, which means that it didn't fall back into the original lines like it was supposed to. So I think I'm going to try the same thing on this clear section just to see what the difference is, and then I'll choose which one to use. That looks way cleaner, and it looks the same depth, but each of the lines is like more defined, I think. I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit and use a parting tool. I don't know if this is a good one or not, but it's one I found. <laughs> and I'm gonna cut off that first section I did, so I'm only dealing with what is currently the good section. That's awful. I've gotta be doing something wrong, but I kinda don't know what I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any idea. I think I'm gonna change my plan just a little bit. So even though the second pass of the knurling is better, I'm gonna use the first just because it's closer to the front and I can just 
move ahead. Because if I part this piece off, I'm then gonna have to go back and part off the other piece. And it's really unsettling to use that parting bit because uh, I feel like something's wrong. So I don't wanna do it any more than I absolutely have to. Um, so we're just gonna use this one up here for now. Which means the next step is to actually drill a hole into the end of it so that we can add in some threads on the inside of this thing to make it a knob so that it will go over to the screw. Basically, we're gonna make a hole that can thread over this right here. So we have to drill a hole that's the right size for this. I've found that you have to look up uh, the size of hole to drill for the size of tap that you're gonna use to make the thread. So you have to make a little bit smaller hole I looked that up and I've got that bit right here. So we have to mount that bit in here in a chuck and then push this into our piece to drill a hole while it's spinning. It is. It's not fighting back at all, which is kind of cool. One thing I just realized that I did not do, which I think will be okay, is I didn't flatten this face before I got started. So there's a little bit of an edge around here that's kind of rough. So I should have flattened that off as a starting point. But uh, as a way around that, I'm gonna use a tool and kind of come in at an angle and put a little chamfer around this edge, which will flatten it and also make it look like fancy stuff. Chamfers are fancy. I ended up using this outer edge of the bit to surface that anyway, and it was totally worth it, even though you're not really gonna see it. But it looks way nicer, the chamfer looks good. So I think I'm ready to part this piece off back here. I just have to decide how deep I want this whole thing to be. Is it fancy now? It is super fancy. Here we go! Oh, it's hot. Do what? <laughs> totally knurled it. It is very smelly. So this face is not pretty, but that can go against the holder. So that can be the outer face. So I think it'll look good. You should spray paint it. Totally. Plasti dip. I think I'm done with the lathe. Uh, and it was scary. I, I don't like the, the feedback that you get holding the knobs. The whole thing starts to shake a little bit and the sounds are changing all the time. And like, I don't know what the sounds mean yet. So I'm a little worried about them, but like, I think I understood it. I probably could have done things in a different order of operations. So next time I have a better idea of that. This is where we're at. Next up, I have to let this thing cool a little bit and then add some threads, tap some threads down the middle of it. And then I think this thing's done. Uh, now I have added threads. I have tapped a hole before and I've had good luck with it and I've had bad luck with it. And I've learned over time that you should do about a quarter turn and then back a little bit and quarter turn and back. And that helps evacuate the chips that you're making. So I'm gonna do that, but I'm pointing that out because if you mess this up, if I mess this up at this point, I have to start over on this piece and I really don't wanna go back to the lathe right now and start all this over. So I'm gonna take my time and do my best to get this threaded. And I think since it's brass, it should be okay. So let's yeah. see if it fits. It's like crooked. It looks to me like the hole that was drilled in here is not actually like, I don't know, straight, centered? I'm not exactly sure what the problem is, but when this goes on here, it wobbles flat, but it'll still do its job. But that's the thing I'll have to figure out how to do that. So let's see if this whole thing will go together. It goes on there. That goes on there. And that thing goes on there. Like that. Now we have to see if it fits in the track. Ready? Dang. Now check this out. I'm gonna get it out of the way. Zip. Out of the way. 
Check this thing out. I made this entire thing on two tools that I was previously pretty scared of. And I will say that I'm not scared of them anymore. I'm not entirely comfortable on them yet, but I think that's like a practice thing. So now I am over the point of avoiding those tools for projects. Hopefully I can use them in projects and you know build up my confidence with them, my comfort level with them as I continue to use them and learn more about the materials and the tools that go on them. But Honestly, I did not expect this thing to look as good as it looks, to work as well as it works. And so I feel like this is a big win. Uh, the product itself is really cool. And if you'd like one of these, let me know. Maybe we can come up with a way to produce these. Um, but also just the fact that I'm a little bit further along on two tools that I was avoiding is fantastic. And if this gave you some sort of a confidence boost or something to attack something that you've been scared of, please let me know down in the comments. Don't just think about it. I want to hear about it because there's a lot of things like this that I've kind of been afraid of doing for a while. And so I want to try to hit these things head on and I want you to be able to do the same. So let us know down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed watching me suffer through but making a cool thing. And if you did, again, let us know down below. We've got lots of other types of projects that you may want to check out. Lots of different types of videos and lots more types on the way. So be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Can't forget the ooh. Is to take measurements of the T-Track. And I'm afraid of machining. Ah! Champers are fancy. That's a T-shirt right there. When you're ready. Fart sounds. Burp! Did you hear that? Yeah. That was off that sheet of aluminum back there. Oh!